Bible. Let's uh, stand if you would, get your large blue hymn book. We'll sing a few songs and then uh, get into the rest of the service. Stand if you would, open up to number 475. Are you redeemed tonight? Amen. Number 475. Redeemed. How I love to proclaim it. On the first. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed. Child and forever I am Redeemed and so happy in Jesus No language my rapture can tell I know that the light of His presence With me doth continually dwell Redeemed, redeemed Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer, I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent, his love is the theme of my song. Redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb Redeemed, redeemed His child and forever On the last I know I shall see in His beauty Amen In whose law I delight Who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and give it me songs in the night. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. Amen. What an affirmation to once saved, always saved. Amen. He won't take away his gift. He won't take back his gift. He's not a stingy giver. Amen? Let's sing um, 224. I know whom I have believed in. Number 224. Amen. And thank God for the book we have that tells us what we know. Amen? I know whom I have believed. 224. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me He hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for His own. But I know whom I have believed in and am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I've committed unto Him against that day. I know not how this saving faith to me He did impart, nor how believing in His Word wrought peace within my heart. But I know
unto him against that day. I know not what of good or ill may be reserved for me. Of weary ways or golden days before his face I see. But I know Unto him against that day. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the veil with him or meet him in the air. But I know whom I have believed in and am persuaded that he is able. Unto him against that day. Amen. Aren't you glad that he's able Amen. when you find yourself unable? Amen. Shame on us for looking at our own selves for strength sometimes when in Christ we have all we need. Amen. Amen. Help us, Lord. Let's sing one more here before our pastor comes up. Let's uh, pick up our small book and sing 103. 103 is Yes, I Know. Yes, I Know. Number 103. We'll start a cappella and then you join. <laughs> can make the vilest sinner clean. To the faith he giveth power, through the mountain makes a way. Findeth water in the desert, turns the night to golden day. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. In temptation he is near thee, holds the prize of hell at bay. Guides you to the path of safety, gives you grace for every day. And I know, yes I know, can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. He will keep thee while the ages roll throughout eternity. Though earth hinders and hell rages, all must work for good to thee. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. Amen. Do you know tonight? Amen. Be seated. Thank you. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank you guys for the music. Praise the Lord. It's good to be together tonight, amen? Amen, amen? All right. Well, listen, um, we, uh, we have a few things coming up. We just want to remind you about um, this Friday is a men's meeting. This Friday night, 7 o'clock here at the church, men's meeting. 
And if you didn't get the text, the reading is going to be, they're going to be reading and just discussing Colossians chapter 3. So be here if you can for that at uh, 7 o'clock. And then Saturday morning, we, uh, looks like we're going to do OJ, right? And then when you get back? Okay. We were planning this Saturday to uh, postpone OJ and do an operation in Samaria where we just take gospel tracts out into one of the little pockets of people groups around the city. We were going to go to Chinatown in um, Queens. We have some scripture signs in Chinese and tracts in Chinese. So that was going to be an outreach uh, this Saturday, but we're going to postpone that um, until either next, the following Saturday or possibly when Alan... Uh, comes back from the Philippines. He's going to be gone about a month. So we'll, we'll let you know. But this Saturday is going to be our normal schedule, breakfast, and then uh, Operation Jerusalem right after breakfast this Saturday morning. need to uh, start nailing down a place to stay, renting a vehicle, looking at tickets and things like that. So if you would like to go September the 12th through the 20th, please, um, please let me know. I think that's it as far as the announcements. Um, praise the Lord, we, have, we had um, a significant um, offering come in recently to help toward uh, the French Bibles. And uh, we, we set a goal Although we're not required to do this, the, the, the people, the, uh, the printing ministry that prints the French Bible for us never asks for anything. But um, of course, it does cost them quite a bit of money to purchase the paper. The cost of the paper this time around was $47,000 for a, uh, this is for a tractor trailer load of paper. And so we print the whole load of paper that gives us a trailer load of scriptures, and then we ship the, the container to uh, Haiti. Uh, so with everything, the cost of the paper, the cost of shipping, the cost, of, uh, the cost on the other end, the customs and duty things that we have to pay over there, it comes to about 60000 So we would like, you know, we, we'd like to do that. We'd like to cover that cost if we can. And uh, we praise the Lord, um, looks like we might, we might reach that. So, uh, yeah, so praise the Lord. But, uh, but we're not there, but uh, anything that you might, you know, be able to do or feel led to do, uh, obviously, um, it's uh, well worth the cost, well worth the expense. Uh, so please um, consider that and pray about that. All right, I think that's it as far as uh, the announcement. We were also planning to do an ordination tonight. Brother Matt St. Arnaud was going to be ordained tonight, um, and, uh, but he's not feeling well, so he's, he's pretty sick tonight. Uh, whatever he had a few days ago when he was preaching is just not getting better, so pray for him tonight. He wasn't able to come to the service. But, um, but it does, he does happen to be, he's still going to be in the area because he's going to visit some friends and relatives for a few days and he'll be back through Staten Island on Sunday. So if he's up to it on Sunday and is able to come, so there's a possibility that we'll do the ordination on Sunday morning while he's here. So just keep that in mind. Pray for him. So keep him in prayer. Also appreciate your prayers for Margaret's mom, Doris Anastasio. Uh, she was diagnosed with a, a stroke. Uh, they're calling it a mild stroke because she, her motor skills were not affected, but her speech was definitely affected. Uh, so, but just pray for recovery and pray for wisdom. Pray for decisions that need to be made about, you know, her care after she gets out of the hospital and all that. 
uh, Doris Anastasio. Appreciate your prayers for her. Uh, you probably got the text. I hope you read it about Carmela. Carmela uh, had surgery to address some infection. Uh, the infection was the result of a previous surgery because of breast cancer, and the surgery for the infection was successful. However, they believe that possibly the infection went into her bloodstream, which can be very, very bad. So um, they have to go see another doctor or specialist about that. So please keep Carmela Manos in prayer. Uh, also, um, uh, of course, keep uh, Brother Matt in prayer. And then um, hope you read the text about Angie Moore. That was uh, very good news. Praise the Lord. Uh, she got some good results from uh, tests recently for her cancer. And it looks like uh, she will not have to have uh, chemotherapy. So praise the Lord for that. Amen for that. All right, it's good to see Robert here again tonight. Nice to have you with us tonight, Robert. Praise the Lord. He and his family were here on, with us on Sunday. A real blessing uh, to have you back again. Okay, uh, Brother uh, Soche is going to be preaching, but we're going to take our normal time, prayer requests, prayer time, and then we're going to give the remainder of the service to him. Uh, but before we even pray, let me just let you know that if you would like to be a blessing to him in a, a financial way, Please help us with that tonight. There's a box in the back. You can leave your offering. And uh, unless your offering is designated for something else in particular, uh, whatever goes in the uh, offering box tonight is going to go to Brother Soche. So we, he's, he leaves tomorrow morning, uh, very, very early in the morning, to uh, fly on to his next meeting. And uh, so we would love to be able to send him on the way with uh, just a, a, a good, generous uh, love offering. So please help us with that if, if you're able to do that. All right, okay, what about uh, other prayer requests tonight? Anything at all that you would like us to pray about this evening? Yes, Linda. Uh, my husband's brother Carl is continuing to be impeached. We're going to pray out his family, uh, his wife and four children, and uh, I don't know, wisdom for the doctors and Irene. Irene. Irene, who has Parkinson. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, so let's remember Irene uh, dealing with Parkinson's and the two ladies that are taking care of her. Her sisters who are taking care of her. And um, for Carl Spinella, this is uh, Joe's brother, Carl, who is terminally ill as far as they know. Yeah, with cancer, looks like terminally ill, but um, Joe had a chance to witness to him and is, is confident that he's saved, so we praise the Lord for that. And then also, uh, let's remember these families uh, devastated by the shootings, multiple shootings lately, but uh, just pray that the Lord would just comfort those families and help them. All right, what else? Anything else tonight? Yes, brother. A lady in uh, Amarillo, Texas, uh, um, Brother Larry Hickam, the pastor, his daughter, young mother with about, I think, four children. The father's not around. I don't know the particulars, but pray for reconciliation in that family. Okay. This is a uh, pastor in Amarillo, his daughter. Kimberly Couture. Kimberly. K E T U R A H. Katura. All right. Kimberly Katura. And we're praying for reconciliation in that family. Okay. We had a good time last night at uh, the train and uh, we're able to give out a lot of tracks and had a few conversations. Seemed like they might be fruitful. Some people. Uh, 
One, uh, one young man, um, did, Lorraine, where are you? Upstairs. She's upstairs. She talked to a young man named Christian. Did he get saved? Was anybody there with her? Remember that? I think she said he, he, he called, yes. No, he did not get saved. Uh, okay. We just had a, an open door with him. Just, uh, he said he was raised up uh, as like a Catholic and uh, just he knew everything about God and uh, what to do, but he just didn't like how he always had to pay, pay to get to God. And just, he, he was very confused. Just, we got an open door. He, All right. He all right, let's pray for that young man, Christian. We had a chance to talk to a young man named Michael for quite a while, and uh, he was very uh, belligerent and adversarial in the beginning, but he sort of came around at the end and wanted to know where our church was, say he might visit, whatnot. We had a lot of opposition. Even the police got involved for a little while, tried to shut everything down. But the Lord, uh, the Lord interceded. We were able to keep going. And then there was a man on the other side of the uh, railroad track on the other platform that, you know, wanted to put his two cents in for a few minutes. But then the Lord, you know, quieted him down and, and he, he said, where's your church at? I might come and visit you. <laughs> so you, you never know. Opposition sometimes is good. It, it you know, it's, it's uh, but anyway, pray for those folks that heard the gospel and took tracks uh, last night. All right. Yes, just wait. Amen. Amen. All right. Josue would like us to pray for his boss, Lewis, and manager Gina, for salvation and for his co-workers, and an open door to be able to speak to them. Amen. Chris. Amen. Amen. Chris and Keith gave out about 2,000 tracks, they said, at a 4th of July event over there in Jamesburg. So praise God for that. Pray that uh, that'll bear some fruit. Okay. Yeah, just, mm -hmm. just praise God that uh, our, our family went with us as well. And um, I think Jacob gave out about 400, 500 tracks. Uh -huh. So full of them. It's just a blessing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Anything else? Joanne? All right, Mary Marone with congestive heart failure and dialysis. All right. Okay, anything else? Yes, Judah? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thanks, thank God that Christian Mashanya, a young man that's dealing with um, leukemia, is feeling better. He's doing better. And uh, praise the Lord for that. All right. Anything else? Mike? Just uh, thank everybody for their prayers for my brother Jimmy. Um, the Lord allowed him to get out of the hospital. And um, he hasn't seen my dad in a long, long time. And lo and behold, the Lord's so good, he allowed us to all meet for breakfast if you ever knew the Murphy family, the Murphy family never said, thank you, Lord. And uh, my father was thanking the Lord. I just was sitting at the table and looked at each other. And I said, you imagine the Lord allowed us to sit down together again at the table. And, and they both were just saying, thank you, Lord. And, yeah. And uh, what a blessing. Good and, God. And, and sit down as a saved family. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, brother. You never That's heard right. those words. <laughs> Amen. 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 All right, anything else? Yes, Nick. Uh, I have two uh, friends, they're Christians, John Pignata and Pete Caruso. They're in the hospital, uh, one with cancer and one uh, very sick, and he's on dialysis. Wow, all right. John Pignata, and what was the other one? Pete Caruso. Pete Caruso. Both of them saved in the hospital. Dealing with cancer and one of them on dialysis. Okay. All right. Is that it? Yes, Frank. Can we pray for 
for my dad and my sister's salvation, I always, you know, try to plant the seed every once in a while because, you know, they get annoyed when I, like, you know, when I'm, like, a nuisance, I guess you could say. <laughs> but I just hope, like, you know, soon it will touch their hearts. Amen. And I invited my best friend to church on Sunday, and I think he's going to come. And I asked his mom and his dad, too. But if we could just get him, too, you know, I think that would be a blessing. So if you guys can pray that up. Amen, brother. What's your dad's name again? Frank. And your sister? Nina. Nina? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's pray for them, Frank and Nina. All right, okay. Is that all? Yes, Kristen. Can you just, uh, pray for my, my brother Darren and his wife Crystal and their baby still. Um, they're doing better. They had COVID. They had like a new strain, so it was, um, it was a little rough. I was there first time. Um, and again, also for their salvation. All right. All right. Okay, good. Okay. Anything else? All right. Find uh, somebody to pray with. Just get a partner, just small groups, two people at a time. And uh, we'll pray about these things together. And then uh, Brother Soche is going to come and preach for us tonight. All right? All right. If you need to, introduce yourself to the person next to you if it's somebody you don't know.
Amen. Uh, we were really, really blessed to have Brother Soche preach for us on Sunday morning. And uh, we're thankful that he was able to stay a little extra time, stay a few extra days, and talked him into preaching again for us this evening. And uh, he's got to leave very early in the morning, so please just keep him in prayer. And uh, I know he'll be a blessing tonight as he comes. All right, brother. Thank you, brother Mike. Yes, sir. When you get a certain age, I think the government ought to give you a portal that to carry around with you. <laughs> It's good to be here. Glad to be here. I um, really enjoy uh, the fellowship I've had since I've been here and uh, the great hospitality of Miss Margaret. And uh, sometimes I add another name to her because Margaret Mary was my seventh grade teacher in uh, St. Peter and Paul. So, but. Uh, your pastor and his wife have been gracious. All of you folks uh, enjoyed your company. And today we had a good time. Me and the pastor and Brother Larry, we cut up some things and never did come to a conclusion, but uh, we're still friends. And I, I don't know, that at, at one point, I think if Larry had, had a gun, he'd have shot me. <laughs> but uh, now it was a real good uh, discussion about the Bible. and things of that nature, and it was a friendship, and uh, it's good to be able to discuss the Word of God, and I'm always willing to learn something from the Word of God. I, ha I haven't gotten to the point in my life where I think I know everything there is to know. I, I don't think anyone, I've ever met anyone like that. Um, if you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis 3, 8. I have a few verses of scripture. I won't keep you that long, I hope. Uh, I'm not a very long-winded preacher. I've got about average 30 minutes in me, and that's about it. <laughs> After that, I run out of brain power. So, so I figure I'd, sometimes I'll stop in the middle of a, of a message. If God doesn't give, me, doesn't give me anything to go any further with, I'll just stop. Why bore you with something that isn't interesting, amen? Uh, Genesis 3, 8. I don't know what that's about. I put it down there, so I guess it must have some meaning. <laughs> Genesis 3 and verse 8. Let's see what it says. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's on the subject. <laughs> I, um, I don't record things. I'm always looking for something new in the Word of God, and I must have, I don't know, thousands of messages in my, uh, in my computer, in the file cabinet. I have a file cabinet. I couldn't tell you one of them. I couldn't tell you one of them. I really do need what's in front of me to assist me and trigger some, something in my mind that God wants me to say, so... Be, be in prayer for me tonight, that God would give me the things that are a blessing to you. And that's why I came. I didn't come for the love offering. I came to exercise the gift that God has given to me to be a blessing to someone else. Amen. And that's what uh, being a Christian is all about, being a blessing to someone else, dying to self. Genesis 3, verse 8, just one verse of Scripture. We're going to go to a few verses of Scripture in the Bible. Uh, it says, and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden. Um, people don't like to hear the word of God. Unsafe people don't like it. They, uh, they hide from the word of God. Sometimes they'll say, I don't want to hear it. And the reason why they say that is because uh, they feel compelled to respond to what they know is the truth. And they don't want to hear it. So if they hide from the word of God, uh, they feel as though they're safe. Um, hearing the word of God is uh, hearing the voice of God, not just the word of God, the voice of God. The word of God, you can, you can read it and never hear what God is saying in it. The idea is to, when you read the word of God, to hear the voice of God speaking to you about something in particular. Uh, it's my opinion that you cannot walk close with God without hearing what God has to say. We were talking about the Word of God earlier, and we were talking about hearing God and being conscious of God, the presence of Him. 
uh, and knowing we were talking about how wonderful it would be if we were, had been one of the apostles to sit down on one side of a table and, and the Lord being on the other side and know like many of the, the apostles didn't, I don't get it in the word of God that they were actually cognizant of who he really was and that he was responsible for their being, that he had made them. I don't see that. I think maybe later on as they grew in grace and knowledge and came to some spiritual understanding that uh, they were ready to give their life for the Lord Jesus Christ because in the early part of the ministry, uh, their association with the Lord, they weren't willing to do that because Peter ran. And not only we, we hold Peter accountable for that, but the Bible says they all ran. And uh, which was a credit to you ladies, you know who followed him? The ladies followed him. Um, you can't walk with God unless you hear the voice of God. The, uh, the words that the Lord said that I speak, uh, uh, they are spirit and they are truth. He told the uh, Pharisees one day, why do you not hear my words? Why do you not understand me? And he's speaking to them, but they didn't understand. You can hear something, but not understand what a person is saying. Larry's like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like that sometimes. Uh, I just love the guy. Uh, Jesus Christ said, uh, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. God speaks to man in, in general through creation. Psalms 119, nah, Psalm 19, 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Uh, God speaks to, uh, to people through believers. Uh, the, no man liveth unto himself, and no man dieth unto himself. That's the reason for good, uh, good testimony. Uh, the fact that you live a Christian life and demonstrate uh, that God lives within you might be a, the only Bible that a person reads. You are the Bible that he's going to read. And sometimes you, it'll be uh, an impetus, in his case, to search out the Scriptures and find out why you're not worried about things the way he is. We're not supposed to be worried about things the way he is. Uh, any unsaved people. The word of God is the voice of God for, for certain things, for fear. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 9.10. For favor, 2 uh, uh, Peter 12, uh, the exceeding great and precious promises. We ought to be conscious of God and the promises of God, that what God has promised us. Listen, I quoted the verse last night, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it? Shall he not uh, perform it? Has he not spoken? Shall he not do it? He's going to do it if he says it, okay? And if he, his word, he, the integrity of God's word. In Hebrews 1, uh, he upholds all things by the word of his power. Not the power of the word. There's a difference between the two. The Bible says in Hebrews 1, he upholds all things by the word of his power. It's like... Uh, it's like Muhammad Ali saying he was going to knock out uh, Archie Moore in, uh, in, uh, in the fourth round. He said, Moore will go in four. Well, he performed that by Moore going in four. See, the word he had, the word of his power was able to accomplish what he said he was going to do. And that's what God is. The word of his power says that he's never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. He promised you that you had eternal life. He, termed, he, he said he, he gave you the power to be all that he wants you to be. I don't know if you know what you, God wants you to be. That's one of the problems with Christianity. They don't have an idea what God wants them to be. If you don't know what God wants you to be, pick out a character. Say, I want to be like Andrew Soche. <laughs> no, don't be like me. I got my problems, folks. Because I didn't get saved until I was 39 years old. And as a result of it, as a result, I have to deal with spirits that I wouldn't wish on anyone. Now, I think we'll get to the text. Go to Psalm 81.
I'd like to preach to you about a closer walk with God. Not just a walk with God, but a very close walk with God. A close walk with God, a closer walk with God, will provide for you uh, a condition that is similar to what the, the apostles experienced in their relationship to him. They were looking at him. Now, you won't be able to see him, but you can see the work of God in your life. Psalm 81, verse 10. We'll start there and end in 16. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. If you desire the things of God, there's no doubt in my mind that God is going to fulfill those things, your ambitions, if they're going to bring glory and honor to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But he says this, he said, but my people would not hawk into my voice. There's the problem. The problem is Christians not hawking to the voice of God when they can hear it, if they hear it. And the idea is to, we were talking about uh, memorizing the word of God. The idea is, as Psalm 119.11 says, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. But uh, Psalm 119 in another spot says, uh, the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, the principle associated with that verse is that it provides you with two means of God's light, the immediate light. I don't know if you know anything about lanterns. You're probably too young to know that, but the way you operate a lantern is that we sing a song, stepping in the light, right? That, so if you hold a lamp here, you're actually stepping in the light, and as you move it, there's light right there, and as you move it, but it's that, that's the immediate light, but if you raise that light up, don't look anymore at that spot. You just follow the light, and you can see as far as the light will take you. See, God's going to take you so far with so much light. And what happens is when you hold that lantern above you like that, you just follow the light. It's clear, it's clear, it's clear, it's clear, it's clear. And you don't ever look down again. You just keep your eye on the extent of that light. And you walk like that and you'll never trip. Because everything in front of you is clear. You saw it. See? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light. Is, God speaks to us through the word of God. If you'll only hear it, make application, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. We sing that song. Uh, there's another song about the light. When we walk in the light, when we walk in the, how's it go? When we walk in, the, what glory we shed on the way. When you're walking in the light of God, you shed some glory on the way. Psalm 81, 10, verse 12. So I gave thee up unto thy own heart, lust, and they walked in their own counsel. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the fineness of the wheat and with honey out of the rock, should I have satisfied thee. It's a tragedy of Christianity to see Christians that are suffering because they're not walking with God. They're not they're not availing themselves, I guess you might say. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on the way. The Bible says that the devil is a, a, a hard taskmaster. And living for God is an easy thing. Really, it's an easy thing. It requires a hard initial act on your part, and that is you're going to have to die to self if you're going to live for God. Abraham's servant, when he sent Abraham's servant to find a wife for Isaac, 
when the servant got to the position where he needed to be in order to get the wife for Isaac, uh, I think I named Rebecca's brother was in charge of the family at that time. And the servant made a statement that is profound. He said, being in the way, God led me. You can't expect God to contribute to the endeavors of your life if you're not walking in the direction that he wants you to go. You can't expect him to get involved in your life if, you, if you're not certain that he's satisfied with you in the life that you're living. People get involved in certain activities and Christians, not just people, Christians. I'm talking to Christians. That's my calling. I call myself an evangelist, but what I am is really a exhorter because not many people are getting evangelized. You know where the evangelism is going to take, uh, take place? On the streets, where, you, where we went today. That's where you're going to evangelize them. Sometimes they come in and they get saved, but you're going to do the saving. It's not all the pastor's responsibility. He said, being in the way, the Lord led me. The right road always leads to the right end. Jesus Christ said about wisdom, he said, wisdom is justified of her children, meaning that the outcome of a thing will tell whether or not there was wisdom in it. Wisdom is justified of her children. And if the thing turns out crooked, you know, God wasn't in it. Well, you, that's, that doesn't mean that it's the end of the road for you. You always have 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, it's, it's not, it may not necessarily be a sin for you to be in, in an endeavor that God hadn't called you into, but it's definitely a wrong decision. You may have all the honest intent behind it that you want to, but it's still a wrong decision. And 1 John will get you on the right road. Amen? Amen. You know, it's, it's not hard to be holy. In Romans, uh, Romans 6, 16 says, uh, what does Romans 6, 16 say? <laughs> to whom you yield yourself, to him your servants. Amen? It says this. And it also says, uh, obedience, it gives the, it, the Bible says, holy men of God speak as they would move by the Holy Ghost. Amen? And we think about that. We think about the holy men of God, the men before us, and we have certain names that we rise up as if they were somebody and, and there really, really was somebody, but there's no reason why you can't be a holy man and a holy woman. Holiness wasn't lost in time. Holiness was lost in the behavior of people. Holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy men of God still speak as they are moved by the Holy Ghost. It's just not to be included in the canon of Scripture. In Romans 6, it says, obedience, rep, obedience unto. That's a verb, which, which if you read it right, unto is a, is a process, an ongoing thing. Repetitious obedience leads to righteousness. I'm not talking about the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about personal righteousness, and you can have that. I'm not talking about self-righteousness. That's a different thing altogether. But personal righteousness, you, you, you want to be righteous? Just keep doing the right thing. And it goes on to say all the way through that chapter, all the way on the end, it says, obedience unto righteousness and righteousness Repetitious righteousness leads to holiness. You know trouble with holiness? Listen, you can get holy. Oh, you can come on. You can do it right in your seat. Kneel down, just lay it all out to God. <laughs> you know, you know where you've been wrong. You know, I, I don't have to tell you. The Holy Spirit tells you when you're wrong. Amen. The conscience tells you when you're wrong. The Word of God tells you when you're wrong. You have all those things at your disposal to help you get things right. Amen. It isn't just to rebuke you. Listen, God doesn't get anything out of it when you become a good person. He gets the joy of knowing that you have become a good person. 
Listen, you know, it's the trouble, not the trouble, but the, 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 uh, the difficulty of holiness. You can get it by just immediately just laying it out and giving your life to God and doing what God wants you to do. It isn't obtaining holiness. It's holding on to it. Moment by moment, day by day, line upon line, precept upon precept. It sounds like a difficult thing, but if you enjoy the fellowship of God, if you enjoy walking with God, if you enjoy having a close relationship with God, why wouldn't you continue it? The fact is you don't many times. The fact is you like fellowshipping with yourself. You like fellowshipping with the things you like whether or not God likes them or not. Listen, you're not, the only person you're fooling is yourself. You, sometimes I wake up in the morning and I look at myself in the mirror and you know what I say? You lousy sucker, you're not getting your way today. <laughs> I mean it. I do that. And it's going to take another because I'm just like you. I, I like what I like and I want to do what I want to do and I don't take into account whether or not it's congruent with the, word, with, the, with the will of God for my life at the moment. You see, it's not the long-range accomplishments for you in walking close with God is to be in a man of God, a lady of God, or a child of God. The long-range objective is accomplished by the moment of living with, with Christ consciously. Consciously. The right road, as I said, always leads to the right end. The Bible says that every way of man is right in his own eyes. But it always leads to the wrong end. No, no one will ever confess to being headed for a disappointment. The Lord Jesus Christ said, God, Jehovah God said to Israel, he said, I know the thoughts that I have toward you. I know the thoughts. Thoughts of good, not bad, that you might have an expected end. An expected end. We all want an expected end. Hebrews 11.35 says about a woman, it says that uh, she... Um, I think I mentioned that Sunday, that she made the right choice in order that she might have a, what was it called? A better resurrection. That's what I want. You know what a better resurrection is? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. He'll probably give you that. He'll probably reward you but just because there is certain amount of rewards for certain things, certain crowns, they're called the crowns that you get, some of us are going to come up a little short. And I don't honestly know what that represents in eternity. But I do know this. If we don't walk with God the way we should, walking close with God is, a, is as a, said in the, uh, in the movie, The Godfather, they said, it's the smart move. <laughs> Let me tell you something, folks. Just from a practical point of view, it's the smart move to walk with God. It's the smart thing to do. It's smart to, to obey God. Why? Because I know that he has my best interest at heart. So I'd be some kind of idiot not to obey him. Considering the fact that I know how many mistakes I made in my life following what I wanted to do. There isn't a person in here that doesn't have some regrets about some things that they've done in their life. And the regret is that you didn't consult with God. You weren't walking with God at the time. You didn't have your mind, your spirit set on God. You didn't know and, and realize his presence. I wish I could feel it the way I know it. I wish I could feel the presence of God. And I, and there are occasions when I think I feel it, but I wish I could feel it the way I know it. Because I know it because God said it. 
and he's not a man to lie. He lives within me. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's like a, it's like a, uh, the Bible is saying it's like a robe. Amen. And here you are. Yes, and the Bible says to take him and put him on. And we talked about last night because it, it's comely. It looks good on a Christian. It's smart, confident. It's confident to walk with God, give you, give you the confidence that you need. In uh, New Orleans, when I do a lot of street work there, it's like uh, a, lot of town, a lot of towns, rather, in Europe. They, uh, the streets are, some of them are no, no wider than that. And they're all second story. They got, it's called the uh, Vieux, Vieux Carré. It's the old quarters. Yeah, four and five years, hundred years old. And I'm preaching on those streets, and every now and then I get the idea that there's some nut up there going to stick out a, tw a rifle and just blow my brains out. Well, it, it comes to my mind. They're doing it all the time now. You think those people that take those guns and kill those kids and kill those people, you don't think that's a spirit? That's a spirit. That spirit has been dealing with that person a long time. He didn't just wake up one morning and decide to take a rifle. He thought about it, planned it out. Spirit spoke to him. He spoke to it. And then before you know it, bam, he killed somebody. That's very possible with all of us. But the idea is, I'm not, why? Why aren't I afraid of that? Because for, I know that for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I know that the moment I die, I'm in the presence of God. There'll have to be something more than death to, to frighten you with, amen? You know what I'm frightened about if I should die? My wife, that's all. What's going to happen to her? How am I going to leave her? What condition she's in? But you know what God told me? Andrew, I can take care of your wife better than you can. <laughs> and that's the truth. So you don't have anything to worry about. So you can go jump off the bridge next week. You know, Jesus Christ was a servant. He served the Father when he said, I do nothing of myself, but as the Father had taught me, I speak these things. Well, that's us when we preach. We don't preach the things that we think are right and wrong. We preach, we preach the word of God. Jesus was a servant. He was a servant not only to the Father, but to the sinner. The Son of God came and made himself a servant for you and I. That's almost unbelievable. If it wasn't written in the Bible, I wouldn't believe it. And that's why, that's why the lost don't get it. Because you gotta, you gotta preach it to them. You gotta let the word of God that's quick and powerful do something to them, enabling them to understand the truth. Jesus was a servant to the Father. He was a servant to the sinner. He was wounded in service to you. He was bruised and chastised in propitiation for our transgressions. Listen, brethren, if that ain't enough to cause you to shout, shout about or to weep about that the Son of God did all that for you, you're in a backslidden condition in spirit. You ought to be rejoicing to think that God would think so highly of you that he would let his son do what he did for you. That ought to commit you to worshiping God as we spoke on Sunday. That ought to be your life's ambition to thank God for what he's done. There isn't anything to this world. What is it? We had a good meal today. Just a meal. You got a set of clothes you put on with food and raiment, that would be content. You can only wear one pair of pants at a time. <laughs> Why amass things that you don't really need? For what reason? You want to know why? Because we're not totally satisfied 
with the knowledge of the presence of God in us and by us and around us. And that our purpose is not to amass things, but to live for him that one day we can say, I did my best. I did all that I could do. It wasn't much. Some of us don't do much. But listen, if you clean the bathrooms better than I do in preparation for messages, which wouldn't be hard, you'll come out on a longer end of that stick than I will. So whatever God's given you to do, whether it's be a servant in the church or to raise children or whatever it is, do it the best that you can do. Don't let one stone unturned, one thing undone. Whatever's in front of you. The preacher said today, a, a, a well-known preacher said, if you want to get called of God, just do the first thing in front of you. See a piece of paper? Pick it up. You see something that needs to be done? Do it. Jesus was a servant to you and I. When you walk close with God, listen what you get to be. You get to be a vineyard. And uh, you, uh, you're the only orchard in, the wor in this world that's able to bring forth any kind of good fruit. No one can bring fruit, fruit in this world except you. You're the only person. Listen, God has chosen you to be a vineyard. Not only that, you know what? You're, in, you're, you're a vineyard in the middle of a desert. That's what this world is. We were talking about that today. Uh, Israel was it? God was in the middle of Israel and he had three, six, nine, twelve camps around him. And he was in the middle of it. Jesus Christ is to be in the middle of all that you do. He's to be the center of it. He should be the purpose of it. He should be the objective of the outcome, whatever that outcome it is whether you want to have children or whether you want to build a building or whether whatever you want to do, whatever your objective, he ought to be the purpose behind the objective. Otherwise, you got a wrong objective. You're starting off on the wrong foot. The tragedy of the vineyard is the husbandmen. They're not walking close with God. They won't rebuke the say. Listen, I heard something the other day that the... Uh, fifth president of the United States said, and he said, uh, somebody quoted it. I don't, the person that quoted it, he, he could have been lying. He could have said that the fifth president of the United States said that, or maybe he just attached that saying to the fifth president because he wanted to accomplish something, and most probably he did. But uh, what was said was, you cannot be truthful if you're worried about offending someone. When you go out on the streets, don't worry about saying hell, because do you know that God spoke, Jesus Christ spoke more about hell than he did about heaven? He said it was a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Hey, mister, I don't want you to go there. You don't have to tell him as though he's already in hell. You're going to hell. No. Mister, you're going to hell. And we don't want you to go there. Amen. Amen. If you had a little compassion about you, it wouldn't sound so terrible. Amen. It's a warning because you're concerned about them. I wish I had more concern. I, brought, I was brought up so hard. Uh, I do what I do as a matter of uh, uh, I owe God. The Roman says, we are debtors. He gave us his life. We owe him our life. You know what we owe him? We owe him a, the respect of the name Christian, associating ourselves with him. I'm trying to, because I'm really over.
You're going to have to die to self. Self is opinionated, stubborn, lustful, argumentative, full of pride, and can never walk with God. None of that can walk with God. You know, in uh, the book of Proverbs, uh, the Bible says, God hates six things, yea, seven are an abomination to God. Six things does God hate, yea, seven are an abomination. It ain't murder, it's not false doctrine, it's not fornication, adultery, or murder. It's a proud look at the top of the list. You want to know why? Because a proud look will represent itself in adultery and fornication and lying and murdering and false doctrine, a proud look. The Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? And the answer is no, they can't. Two can't walk together if they be not agreed. Finally, let me say this. If you have your Bibles, let's, uh, I got two verses of scripture I'd like to go to. The first one is in uh, Psalm 80. I don't have it written down. I want to really want to just, I think it's 86. No. Let's go to Psalm. I can almost quote it. Oh, Lord doesn't want me to have it. Go to 19.3. Yeah, it was too long to expound anyway. 19.3. Nineteen thirteen. Nineteen thirteen says this. Uh, David says this. The other one that I was looking for was an un unidentified author for that particular song. But David says this. He says, "Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults." Well. David must have had one or a couple that he didn't know about. But the verse of scripture that I want to quote to you is in chapter 19, verse 13. It says, keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and shall be innocent from the great transgression. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but presumption, presumption is a terrible sin. It presumes something that isn't true. It's presumption and a great transgression to think that you're walking with God when he is not your first love. It's a great transgression. Go with me to Psalm 130. Not only is it a transgression, but it's a great transgression because it's one thing to be wrong, but it's another thing to be to be wrong and think you're right. That's the presumption of Christians many times. They presume themselves to be in fellowship, walking close with God, when in fact they're not. In Psalm 137, we find a man, go to 137, that's really what I wanted. We find a man saying this. It doesn't say who wrote this song, but whoever wrote this song really wasn't very cognizant of why he's feeling the way he does. By the rivers of Babylon, 
No telling who that is. He's in captivity. This is somewhere around 606 B.C. when, when Nebuchadnezzar comes in and takes uh, Israel or, and Judah out and brings them to Babylon. He said, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Kind of late, Jack. Kind of late. Should have remembered Zion before you got in that situation. He says this. <laughs> We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. Years ago, there was a lady that sang a jazz song. It says, willow weep for me, willow weep for me. Hang your branches down along the ground and cover, uh, cover me. You know what it's a picture of? You ever see a willow tree? The branches hang all the way down to the ground. You know, you know why God gets underneath that? He's depressed. <laughs> he don't want to look outside. He wants to be covered. He wants to hide. Depression, you ever find a person that sleeps a lot? They're depressed. I'll tell you something about that. Verse 3, it says, For there they carried us captive, required us a song. And he says, "How shall, in verse 4, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Well, because you got yourself in a situation, pal, that now you're depressed, and when everybody's singing the songs of Zion, you're quiet. You know why some of you can't sing? Because you don't have the joy. Because you're in Babylon. That's why he couldn't sing. He was remembering Babylon. I'll tell you a little bit about Babylon, not walking with God. The road to Babylon is paved with, uh, with disobedience. That's how he got there. 606 B.C., 200 years earlier, 800 B.C., 700 B.C., 600 B.C., all the way 1200 B.C., God kept saying, cut it out, cut it out, cut it out. It's coming, it's coming. They did not pay attention to God. They weren't walking according to the dictates of the law. The reason why you're unhappy, you're not walking with God. Brethren, do yourself a favor. And like they say, walk with God. It's the smart move. Let's pray. Brother Mike, you come pray for us. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Well, praise the Lord. How's your walk tonight? How's your walk with God? How's your walk with God? We're not supposed to be walking for God. We're supposed to be walking with Him. With Him. And uh, like the preacher said tonight, it's so true. It's just so true. If you're not walking with Him, that's the source of a multitude of problems, a multitude of problems. And we might be griping about the problems, but the real source of all of that is you're not walking where you should be and not walking with whom you should be walking. So tonight, if God spoke to you from any part of that message this evening, we're not going to have the piano play or sing a song, but if God, the Holy Spirit, spoke to you. You know there's something in your life keeping you from walking in fellowship with the Lord. You know, even in your marriage, in your relationships, friendships, things come into your life. You allow things in your life and it ruins a friendship, ruins a marriage, ruins your fellowship. Can two walk together except they be what? Agreed. You know that. We're not in harmony. We don't, you know, we're not on the same page with God on maybe any number of issues. And if that's the case, if God used the message tonight to help you, speak to you, deal with something in your life, that's the purpose of preaching. It's not just a demonstration of somebody's oratorical ability. It's the spirit. I've watched it. He's been, he's been staying in my house. I've watched him for the last two days, reading and praying and reading and praying and pouring over his Bible to see what God would have him say tonight. So 
I, I wouldn't take that too lightly. I wouldn't take that lightly at all. He gave us tonight what the Lord put on his heart to give us, so that means we needed it tonight. So if God spoke to you, if God dealt with you, you know there's something that's hindering your walk. It's hurting your relationship with the Lord. It's not smart. I like that. It's just not the smart move. You're hurting yourself. So if there's anything tonight that you'd be honest with God and say, Lord, there, I know there's something in the way. There's something hurting my walk with you. There's something hindering, hindering my walk with you. Give me grace for that. Help me with that tonight. Lay it at his feet tonight, right where you are. Just lay it at his feet, right there in your seat. Just give it to God. Ask the Lord. Confess it to God. And uh, let the Lord deal with you about it. Let the Lord help you with that tonight. If that's the case, you don't even have to raise your hand tonight. God already knows. Just be honest with him this evening. Be honest with him. And uh, you can talk to him right now. Lord, my life, my walk is not what it should be. You may know you're saved. You got eternal security. You got that nailed down. You're sure you're on your way to heaven, but you're not walking with him. You're not walking with him. If that's the case, would you just talk to him right now? Confess it to him right now. Ask God to give you repentance, to fix it. Some of you struggling with things. You know, so many times I talk to somebody who needs some help and they'll say, well, I know I'm not reading my Bible like I ought to. Well, okay, what else do you want me to tell you? <laughs> I know I'm not, I know I'm not doing what I should, I'm not doing this. Well, like the preacher said, this is not, this is not difficult. It's not complicated. You can do it. You and I can do it. God will give us the grace. He'll give us the power to do that. We've already been promised these things. Father, Lord God, we thank you tonight for your word. I know it was exactly what you wanted us, this church to hear tonight. It's what we needed. I pray that we might take heed. Lord, I just was reading again today in Proverbs chapter 1 how, how you wanted to bless your people, but they just would not hearken to your counsel. And you said that you would laugh when their calamity came. What a... What an incredible thing, Lord. What an incredible thing. You have a right to be obeyed. You have a right for your people to hearken unto your counsel, to hear it, to, to take heed. Help us, Lord. Forgive us when we've just turned our ears away, turned away from that counsel rather than turn toward you to that counsel. Help us tonight. Help someone tonight, Lord, to turn to that counsel, to heed, to hearken to what was preached here this evening. Help us, Lord, tonight. Hear the prayers that I trust are being prayed in this place right now. And grant those things, Lord, in the lives of your people. Help us this evening, Lord. Give us a closer walk, Lord, with you. Help us to get the things out of our life that keep us from walking with you closely. Help us not to spare, not to spare our own selves. And Lord, accomplish your will, we pray, in this church. Thank you again for our dear brother. Thank you for the message. Thank you for the fellowship we've enjoyed with him this week. What a blessing he has always been to us when he comes. Pray that you'd help him, Lord, tomorrow. May there be safe travel. Bless him in the meeting that follows wherever he may be, and I uh, pray that you keep your hand upon his life, his family, his wife, and the work you've given him to do. Thank you for the strength that you've given him, Lord, and uh, pray that you'd give him good health. And I know the desire of his heart when it comes to preaching, and I pray you'd grant that, Lord. Grant that desire. And we love you tonight, and we thank you for these things. Thank you for being so good to our church, Lord. Pray that we'd take heed. Pray that we'd recognize our great debt and just walk worthy of thee. We love you and ask these things now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Amen, amen. Thank you, folks. And uh, remember, if you'd like to give something tonight, it's all going to our dear brother. And let's be a blessing to him, all right? Amen. God bless you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>